it, it is a very good question. Uh, why we choose UGCS and why we be, uh, when, why we became a UGCS reseller and finally we reach a premium reseller status uh, right now. And uh, I think uh, and uh, to tell the truth, uh, we didn't like to be a reseller of UGCS, and we just. Uh, search uh, through the market to find out any solution to use uh, drone for survey. And before, um, uh, when we start our business, uh, we tried a lot of softwares like Leechy, like uh, all other softwares. And we found out that it is not possible to use for survey and mapping in a, uh, in a difficult terrain areas, in the areas where there is no internet, where you couldn't download, inter uh, where you couldn't reach uh, internet connection. And finally, when we uh, come deeper and deeper to, to survey, we found out that all uh, other software just provide you pre uh, basic functions and ba basic uh, features to make survey. But when you need to get a good, uh, when you need to reach a good level of survey product, like three-dimensional model, or when you need to arrange uh, mapping with LiDAR, uh, you need a special software, which allows you to tune up all your settings in a good way. And uh, my first uh, experience with UGCS, I, I, I found out that it is, was very, very complicated. And this is why we decided to make us, uh, to take part in this event, to share our experience and to show uh, all other uh, all uh, other surveyors that UGCS is very simple to use. You just need to understand the total workflow, and after that, you can tune up your uh, flight mission. You can set up your flight mission easily. And of course, as soon as uh, a lot of our users use uh, UGCS for mapping and surveying, they ask a lot of questions. And I try to try to sum up all these questions. And I would like to make uh, to show you some tips and tricks how to use UGCS for real work in a very uh, rugged conditions. And uh, let me uh, add some uh, information about Evgeny. Uh, and uh, Evgeny, he's uh, from uh, Luke University, Finnish Research Institute, and they fly in in very difficult conditions at night. In a polar in a polar night with a uh, with, um, with a in a polar night uh, in the winter and so on and I think Evgeny will share his experience how how to fly on very low altitude as soon as uh, I understand from his topic Evgeny hello uh, hello and nice to hear you so I crashed several drones and then I thought with uh, pix 4 uh, uh, with uh, other applications like Map Pilot etc and then I realized okay. For example, you could have a Mavic uh, Pro updated with Topo Drone solution, and there are very nice sensors in Mavic, but those sensors simply doesn't work in forest, forest condition. So I've got immediately the idea, okay, I need something else than just rely on sensors. I really had a case where I crashed a drone because it was three trees and drone was not able to choose to which direction to fly. So then it made the decision and crashed. <laughs> so uh, sensors are nice, but uh, for me, UGCS is something else, some kind of like backup just in case if your drone will not follow the sensors. Okay, so uh, let me start my presentation. And if you have any question, uh, you are welcome to write this question or just if somebody from uh, our team or, or Evgeny, Sabine or uh, any uh, guys from UGC's team will have any questions or any advices for me, I will be glad to answer it in real time. I think it will help us to make a real life uh, presentation and it will help us to provide uh, more information for, for, for users. Okay, let's start. Uh, I will share my screen and uh, let me, I don't know if I have prepared presentation, but. Uh... <laughs> yes, okay. uh, just, just a small uh, tip uh, for our listeners. So in the background, we have also uh, a UGCS team from support and also Alexa Dabrowski is uh, joining today. So please just yes, write your questions. Uh, and write your ideas how uh, UGCS has to be improved for LiDAR, et cetera, et cetera, so we can discuss it and add this to our roadmap. Okay, Maxim, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, thank you. And uh, I would like to start uh, with this slide. It's just a um, uh, uh, picture which we would like to prepare for uh, to be like a, a premium list of our presentation, where we show our latest uh, products, it's a LiDAR. 
And uh, right now we produce very high precision LIDAR systems, uh, which can be installed on Matrix 200, Matrix 300. And uh, finally, we will reach this topic. But I would like to start from the beginning, from the, uh, from the point when we start our business, uh, uh, when we, uh, we change our uh, um, field of work. Before we were surveyors, just uh, make some measurement with the equipment like uh, total station, like GPS. But uh, finally, we, we, have to uh, we have to find any solution to make survey in the mountains and don't lay uh, ground control points. And when we start our business uh, um, with the drones, uh, there were only a few, uh, few solutions in the market. It was uh, very expensive survey drones uh, starting from 20 or $30,000. And it was DJI RTK system installed on Matrix 600. And uh, my business uh, started when I bought Matrix 600 drone. Do you, do you remember a huge one drone with uh, six propellers, uh, six motors, and it can carry a uh, heavy camera. But, uh, and uh, DJI announced that it is did, real did, uh, RTK system. And I just, I just uh, received a huge work for uh, 10, 12 kilometers survey in the mountain area. And I went to Hong Kong to buy a Matrix 600 with RTK system. And uh, after that, I just, I, I, I had never tested uh, this drone at work. I just bought it. Uh, and I just believe uh, to, to advertisement that it, it, work, it works in, in real RTK mode. But finally, when I reached the place, it was uh, uh, 4,000 kilometers from Moscow. Um, uh, uh, 1,000 kilometers from any uh, from from the airport, and I start to work with uh, start uh, try to work with system. I found out that uh, Arctic, DJI RTK uh, didn't work at all. It just uh, allows to fly carefully, uh, precisely, but uh, it didn't save any precise coordinates of the images. As a result, I had to uh, to spend a few a few weeks more. Uh, climbing in the mountains to measure some ground control points. And then finally, I understood that I just lost money with this equipment. And uh, unfortunately, uh, not unfortunately, it's, uh, it was like uh, uh, a big push uh, to us, uh, to, for me, to invent something which, uh, which, uh, which allows me to, to walk without any ground control points, without climbing, without the special equipment to climb in the mountains. And, uh, uh, and before, from my experience, uh, I, I used to process uh, satellite data. I used to make uh, photogrammetry processing of satellite data. And uh, I understood the total uh, photogrammetry technology. After that, I moved to uh, survey. And uh, I, I understood uh, post uh, Genesis data, post processing, and everything, and everything. And finally, I we found out the way with my uh, friend and partner, uh, how to upgrade uh, Phantom 4 Pro with additional Genesis receiver installed. It was uh, one frequency, L1 uh, Genesis receiver uh, from Emlit and guys from Emlit. They, I think they changed the market at all because they produce something which can be installed on the drone with a very small factor and it provides very good accuracy. And when we made a first test, we achieved accuracy between 10 or 15 centimeters from the flight uh, without any ground control points. And after that, we understood that this thing help, uh, will hel uh, would help us uh, to, uh, to, to survey, to save our time. And, don't, uh, and now we don't need to go to the field to lay ground control points, so on, so on. And we start our business. And and from the first request uh, from, uh, and after that, I share some information on the website and so on. And finally, I received, a, we received a lot of requests uh, to upgrade their drones. And after that, uh, DJI uh, announced uh, Phantom for RTK. Uh, it, it was announced after one year when we invented uh, the system, PPK system. But, uh, and we, why we, uh, we, we were focused on DJI? Because DJI, produce very good drones, high quality drones. Uh, it's easy to fly. And uh, after that, we decided that uh, we can provide some equipment which can, can be affordable for users, which can be installed on their existing drones, and uh, which uh, provides, very, uh, which 
and this equipment should provide high accuracy. And uh, first, uh, first of all, we created two frequency GNSS receiver for the drone. After that, we installed GNSS receiver on uh, Mavic 2 Pro. And you know that Mavic 2 Pro has very good uh, Hasselblad camera, but uh, uh, unfortunately, Hasselblad camera has a rolling shutter. And after that, we started to work with PixUD. And we found out the way how to remove rolling shutter distortion, how to create uh, precise three-dimensional models in orthophoto with using of Hasselblad camera. And after that, PixVD approved our data processing workflow. And uh, now uh, data processing workflow, which is uh, included in our, da uh, uh, our data sets and uh, which is included in our tutorials, this workflow was approved uh, by PixVD as well. And uh, as a result, we become a, a premium reseller of PixVD. And finally, what we faced, uh, and what problem we faced, before we use some simple uh, software, uh, like uh, uh, my pilot, like Ground Station Pro, but as soon as we uh, went deeper to the survey and we need to uh, make survey in the mountains in a hard to reach areas without any connection, we started to search for the market and we found out UGCS. And of course, UGCS is very difficult to, uh, to understand from a first sight because it's not a, uh, just a consumer uh, application, which can be installed only on a laptop or only on a tablet, on phone, and just one button to fly. But when you fly with one button, you should uh, you shouldn't uh, uh, you, you shouldn't uh, understand that uh, you should understand that you did, uh, you don't receive. Uh, um, high quality flying. You don't receive, uh, uh, you, uh, this software doesn't provide a lot of functions for flying uh, to tune up uh, uh, road and so on. So right now um, we provide equipment for high precision survey, which can be installed uh, on any drone from Mavic uh, Mini. And it's, I think it's a very good solution. And this solution due to the uh, rolling shutter camera, but uh, with a stable focal lens. It, this solution provides uh, three and five centimeter accuracy without using of any ground control points. And uh, it can be easily processed in PIX3D and during our seminars, we show how to use uh, Mavic Mini for survey. And of course we provide the PPK solution for, uh, uh, for Mavic 2 Pro, for uh, Phantom, for uh, Matrix. And finally we designed and of course, we wanted to, to use LiDAR in our survey. And LiDAR costs a lot of money, starting from $100,000. And finally, we design our all LiDAR system, which provides uh, three, five centimeter accuracy and, ca and can be easily installed on any DJI drone and can be combined with a camera uh, to get a, a colorized point cloud. And all these steps, uh, how to survey with the UGCS, I will show during my presentation. Uh, so, uh, what we should know, uh, that uh, in order to make a precise survey, you should plan mission precisely. And uh, for, uh, on your equipment, you should use a uh, special GNSS receiver, which is built in, in, in a drone or additionally installed, or you should uh, use additional sensors. And if we are talking about uh, LiDAR system, comparison between LiDAR system and photogrammetry, I would say that Photogrammetry is the most affordable solution to get three-dimensional model. But photogrammetry depends on a lot of settings of flying. For example, on fly altitude, on a, a light conditions, on, a, uh, um, on, a, uh, on overlapping, and all these, uh, all these things influence to, uh, to, to final accuracy and to final quality of three-dimensional model. As, as a result, in order to get very good accuracy, to reach good accuracy of three-dimensional model or uh, map, you should uh, use appropriate tool to plan mission, to set up the camera, to provide, uh, uh, to choose flight speed and so on. If we are talking about uh, LiDAR, LiDAR provides very stable results and it doesn't, it doesn't depend it doesn't depend on any lighting condition. You can fly at night, you can fly in a uh, low temperature, but what you should provide? You should, uh, you should create a very smooth trajectory and you should follow the terrain. And as a result, uh, and you need to make uh, uh, IMU calibration during the flight. 
And uh, all these uh, features, uh, all these functions are available uh, in UGC software as well. And if we talk about uh, uh, total uh, workflow, uh, data processing workflow, drone survey workflow, first of all, of course, we should install a base station or, or use, uh, um, or use um, uh, uh, your country survey network just to download Trinet file to, or to connect to this network. The next step, you should prepare a mission and you should make an aerial survey. And this is why um, it is very important to, to, to have uh, stable software, which allows you to plan mission carefully. And in this case, uh, we will talk about it later. And uh, all my presentation will be focused on, uh, on a mission planning uh, for different type of applications, such as mapping, three-dimensional mapping, LIDAR survey, and so on. But of course, after, after survey, you need to, to post-process data. And in this case, uh, um, right now, there are uh, two different uh, ways how to you get precise position of the photos in order to get very precise images. This one, one, one way, it's a RTK system, real RTK system, real time uh, kinematic system or post-processing kinematic. And uh, if we are talking about uh, RTK system, it's not possible to use RTK in the mountains, in the a, in a cities where you fly around buildings and you can lose your connection to the drone. As soon as you lose connection to the drone between your drone and base station, you will lose precise position of the drone. And uh, in this case, your survey will be um, spoiled. Uh, but this PPK, uh, PPK provide, uh, provides you a possibility to be uh, independent from, uh, from uh, any network. You just need to install your base station. As a base station, you can use any GNSS receiver which stores Rhinox files in a static mode. And you should fly. And uh, GNSS receiver installed on the drone will save uh, kinematic data set, uh, raw kinematic data set, and after post-processing, and uh, you, you will get very precise position of the photo, which can be used uh, in uh, any software for uh, photogrammetric processing. But what I would say that uh, with post-processing uh, post kinematic techniques, you can implement additional filters and you can increase the accuracy of GNSS data post-processing in comparison with RTK. As a result, when you make survey in uh, any area where there is no any internet connection, where there is no any uh, GNSS receivers close to you, and you fly in mountains areas where you can lose e lo easily lose uh, connection to the drone, I would suggest to use PPK system. And for your flights uh, with PPK system, you will achieve better accuracy in comparison with RTK. And what, what is very important for efficiency that with PPK, you can fly much faster in comparison with RTK. Um, what else? And of course, you need to check the accuracy. You need to play some ground control points. But uh, with PPK system, you just need uh, to, uh, to put one or two uh, ground control points to check uh, accuracy. And, uh, um, and maybe you need some ground control points to calibrate focal lens. During our training, we show how to calibrate focal lens, how to pr uh, process data set in order to achieve accuracy between three and five centimeters. For three-dimensional models, we can, uh, uh, in some cases, we can achieve accuracy up to two centimeters. And of course, data processing, uh, the most, uh, uh, the, the longest part of data processing, it, it's, uh, it is generating of three-dimensional model. It's generating of uh, three-dimensional point cloud. If we compare photogrammetry and LiDAR uh, survey, I would say that LiDAR survey provides you more stable results, and uh, you will receive data set within 20 or 30 minutes after the flight. So uh, in case of photogrammetry, you will get three-dimensional model uh, after a few hours or 10 hours. And if you, if you have a huge project, you will get it uh, within uh, several days. But with LiDAR, you will get a three-dimensional point cloud, which can penetrate uh, 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 high grass or uh, forest, um, and you will get this point cloud within uh, uh, 20 or 30 minutes after flight. So when we use, uh, when we make a survey, usually we have two people in, uh, in the team. One, one guy is looking uh, for the drone and another one guy 
process is processing data set. So during uh, field work, we already process all data set. And um, let's talk about mission planning software. And uh, why we, uh, before, we have a lot of requirements to get uh, appropriate software for our survey. And as, as far as we uh, had uh, difficult projects uh, to, uh, to accomplish, to work in the mountains area, like I said, or uh, hard to reach area without GSM connection, we, uh, we, found, uh, we created some requirements for uh, mission planning software. First of all, as soon as we, uh, we produce equipment for different type of drones, uh, uh, from uh, Mavic Mini to from Mavic Mini to Matlas 300 or for for any other drones like Viton, we need one software which supports all kinds of drone, and of course we need uh, terrain following one. And in some cases, when when we make survey in the queries or in some uh, um, open pit uh, in the mining areas, we need to add our custom ter uh, terrain model for mission planning. And it's very important to fly on a, uh, on a appropriate altitude during the survey, as well as for photogrammetry and as well as for uh, LIDAR. And what else? And of course, uh, in some cases, uh, we don't have any GSM connection, any, any internet network. In these cases, we need to cache all data set, all maps, all uh, features inside of our laptop and prepare mission in the, on the laptop as soon as we have very difficult projects. And of course, we need to, uh, to uh, possibility to upload HAML file, vector file, DTM, DEM, uh, or the photo in our mission planning software as soon as we made the uh, as soon as we work on the difficult task, uh, tasks like uh, three-dimensional mapping or mining site survey. And, um, and this software should work as well as with photogrammetry and as well as with LiDAR survey. And uh, LiDAR survey has some, uh, uh, some, um, um, some additional features which can be implemented during uh, the flight. And uh, um, we need to make survey over the power lines. So we need uh, to, uh, we need to prepare line our mission. We need to survey area to make area survey to make oblique missions, and all these features, all these possibilities should be combined in one software. And of course, um, what we need uh, as soon as we use different type of cameras, uh, for example, on Matrix 300 or Matrix 200, you can install Sony RX1 camera, Sony Alpha 7 camera. It's better that our user will have possibility to choose with payload from uh, from the software to uh, to create uh, to prepare a mission and to get uh, appropriate parameters for overlapping. Um, what else? And for some uh, for some reasons, for example, when you survey for the huge area and your uh, uh, starting point is far from uh, area of survey, you need to fly as fast as possible to to this uh, to the starting point of, of the area survey. In this case, you need to know how to change the uh, flight uh, uh, flight speed for the one part of trajectory, not for the whole trajectory, just to the one part, for example, from the starting point to the area of survey. And at the end of area survey, you just need to fly as much faster as possible, uh, much faster as possible uh, to, to land a landing point. In this case, uh, as you understand, it's, uh, uh, there are a lot of requirements to tune up uh, your uh, mission planning. And as a result, we test a lot of software to tell the truth. We, uh, before we use Ground Station Pro, uh, MapPilot, uh, um, uh, Pix4D, uh, Drone Deploy, and so on. And finally, we found out that uh, only one software should be installed definitely on our laptop. It is UGCS. And of course, firstly, we, we faced a lot of problems because we don't we didn't understand the total workflow, and I would like to share it uh, for you. Um, let's talk about uh, simple photogrammetry mission. If you have any questions during my presentation, I will answer right now on this part and then move to another one part. Um, Sabine, if you help me to to just to yes yes uh, we will check ask me questions and I will uh, I will reply. Yes, we will do that when we have something.
Uh, okay, I see some questions about genesis and amniopurity. Uh, so, uh, do you, um, it's very simple to to, uh, to answer you. The results of our survey provides free of five centimeter accuracy of derived uh, three dimensional point cloud. As a result, um, um, it, it means that our genesis receiver provides approximately two or three centimeter accuracy of post processing, and our IMU works on uh, 200 or 300 gertz rate, and its measure position uh, between uh, genesis uh, between measurement of genesis receiver, which work on um, which on work on uh, 10 uh, 10 gertz up to 20 gertz. As a result, we can post process data, and we will achieve uh, we will get trajectory with uh, uh, with uh, 200 or 300 gertz rate with accuracy within few centimeters. As a result, we will process data set and generate point cloud without any ground control points with accuracy of three or five centimeters from 70 or 150 meters altitude. Uh, for uh, the next question, for photogrammetry, there is a requirement uh, for photogrammetry, there is a requirement uh, of overlapping the images. What about uh, LIDAR? What is the recommended flight line overlap? It's a very good question. And I will answer during my presentation when we, we will talk about uh, mission planning for LIDAR. Uh, there is one question about, uh, um, can the LIDAR be attached? About uh, PixHuff, I don't have any knowledge about PixHuff, uh, so I will leave it uh, for you. About attaching the drone uh, to... Uh, and uh, um, uh, there is one question, could we provide uh, information about PPK and RTK mode? It's very simple, you just, uh, just visit our website and download sections, there are a lot of data processing tutorials, videos, and um, all, all information, including the de uh, demo data sets with the raw data set, with the ground control points to check the accuracy, and with step-by-step -step instruction how to process data. Uh, can the LiDAR be attached fixed to an other uh, than DJI drones? Of course. Why we choose DJI? The the first issue, why we choose DJI drones, matrix 200 and 300, why? Because these, drone, uh, these drones have uh, obstacle avoidance systems. In this case, uh, you, uh, you can fly safely in comparison with matrix 600, because matrix 600 uh, doesn't have any obstacle avoidance system. In this case, but it can be installed on any drone and it can be installed and removed easily. Alexander, could you show how to remove uh, LiDAR from the drone? Um, I, my my friend Alexander, uh, he uh, he will show uh, how to remove uh, uh, the drone. Okay, okay. just uh, we need to uh, remove unnecessary connector. We need to remove uh, DJI, uh, and we, our system is connected to DJI Xport or Skyport, and uh, it's it's like a plug and play. You just click, and you can walk. So it's very easy. Uh, Justin Cancel said that uh, SLAM LiDAR is excellent. I would say that uh, you should test sla SLAM LiDAR on the drone. And after that, um, I don't know how you uh, can georeference data set with the SLAM technology, how to, uh, we don't use any ground control points for data processing and we don't use SLAM technology. It's real measurement uh, in comparison with SLAM. What is the source of terrain data you are using for mission? Do you create custom or public data accurate, accurate enough? Okay, it's a very good question. And uh, let me start my part of presentation and I will show how to use additional uh, data set, uh, terrain data set in uh, UGCS. Will be a portion where Maxim talk about the workflow of, of their LiDAR system from flight planning to mission acquisition. Yes, of course, I, I, definitely. You asked me all, uh, all, uh, all information which is prepared in the presentation and we will talk about this later. And what is? Good day from Peru. Is better out ever that Phantom 4 Pro for photogrammetry? I would say that Phantom 4 Pro is the best drone for photogrammetry in terms of, exp of expenses and in terms of quality of the camera, why? Because Phantom 4 Pro has a mechanical global shutter and it provides very good accuracy, very stable. 
and you don't need to remove this uh, rolling shutter distortion. In case of uh, Autel or Mavic 2 Pro, in this case, they use rolling shutter. In this case, you need to add additional uh, correction. And all these steps of, uh, of this correction is, uh, is described, uh, all steps are described in our uh, blog, in our website. And I think if somebody help me, we will send uh, some link uh, for this data set. Um, of course, uh, and finally, final question, and I will move on another one part of my presentation. Of course, we use figure of infinity to calibrate IMU, of course, and I will show you. Um, yes, and uh, this is the last question is very good. Can we uh, LIDAR uh, use on unmanned surface vessel, robot or boat, or can be installed on, on the drone? Yes. Uh, why we choose... Uh, a lot of people work right now with uh, um, um, with live box sensors, and uh, it's very good. And I think uh, we will release uh, lidar uh, based on live box uh, sensor within uh, one or two months. And but what is the the, the most uh, what is the biggest advantage of our system that it works in 360 degree? In this case, you can install it on a drone like this one, or you can install a backpack. And I will show you backpack uh, during my presentation, and you can install it on a, uh, on on any vehicle. And I will show, and I think uh, Evgeny will show it uh, during our presentation as well. So how we use uh, lidar uh, from uh, how we use the same lidar, this one or this one, a different type of lidar. Uh, uh, this one works on 200 meters altitude. This one works uh, on uh, uh, 70 uh, meters altitude. Sorry. Okay, and um, we can use this LiDAR system uh, uh, both on, uh, on UAV or you can, we can use it on, in a backpack or in a car. Okay, Ooh, how, uh, Okay, I just uh, answer your question. First of all, this one, it's a real uh, system and uh, it works in any condition and it works uh, on any vehicle. So your question, what are the main advantage of using Kultra LiDAR instead of solution of DJI based on live of sensor? I already answered this question and what I would say. Uh, first of all, uh, I would say that we should wait for, uh, for DJI release of uh, L1 system uh, and uh, we should wait uh, for, for real accuracy checking. I think what they uh, announced that it is system just to get very uh, fast point cloud for, for mapping and uh, not for, uh, for some disasters and so on. And they wrote accuracy, uh, XY accuracy within 10 centimeters. They just indicated 10 centimeters accuracy from 50 meters altitude flight. I don't know if it is possible to use such accuracy in, uh, in the surveying, uh, we should check. Okay, uh, let, me, uh, let, uh, let, me, let me continue. Okay, uh, what else? Uh, so let's talk about uh, photo, uh, simple photogrammetry mission. And uh, um, I, I, just, I just select uh, one uh, project which we made for open pit survey. And uh, as you can see, it was uh, one question. Where, from what source we receive uh, uh, terrain level? First of all, of course, we use UGCS and uh, UGCS uh, download terrain level from available sources from internet. And as you can see, um, it, there is a flat terrain uh, on the uh, open pit uh, site. And um, now I would like to show how to plan mission, uh, photogrammetry mission over this area in order to follow real terrain. Real terrain, not the terrain which are available from uh, internet. First of all, we, we should set up fly altitude for the drone and we should, we should set up uh, um, uh, action when uh, drone will lose connection. I would I would choose um, uh, uh, I would choose continue mission in, in case of losing uh, connection between drone and, uh, and and the remote. And uh, I would choose the trajectory uh, type straight or safe. It means uh, uh, 
is, is there are different type of trajectory straight uh, the drone will flies between points like uh, directly between two points and uh, safe drone will rise to the altitude of the second point and then reach the second point um, and of course you can choose any drone model which is available in uh, uh, UGCS and uh, I would say that I never saw so many drones which are supported by software and um, uh, next, uh, what we need to do, we need to set up a uh, first waypoint uh, and, after, uh, and for the first waypoint, we should set up flight, uh, flight altitude of this uh, first point. And then we can set up flight speed between uh, first point and the second point. In this case, if you, have, if you plan mission far from, uh, far, far from your starting point, you can increase flight speed on this uh, trajectory path. It will help you to save your uh, time and power for real survey, not for flying with uh, four meters per second to uh, one kilometer to your area of survey. Um, and uh, we can choose type of uh, type of uh, uh, turning type. Uh, for example, for photogrammetry survey or for lidar survey, it's better to choose adaptive banking. Why? Because in this case, drone flies like a plane. And in this case, don't, uh, don't, don't stop on the turning points and don't lose power to stop and start uh, to increase uh, uh, speed. Uh, what else? Next step, uh, I would select photogrammetry to just simple photogrammetry too. And I, I will set up a fl a flight speed. I will set up a type of, uh, uh, of turning of the drone. I would set up ground res resolution uh, GSD, but what I would say, this one thing which, which can be improved in uh, UGCS, it's better to set up not only uh, GSD, but it's better to set up uh, fly altitude. Sometimes I don't know exactly which D GSD I, I should reach, but I should know exact flight altitude in order to avoid obstacles. In this case, it's better to, uh, to, add, fun, uh, to add possibility to add flight altitude for photogrammetry mission as well as uh, GSD, just to recalculate it uh, due to different type of uh, sensors. And uh, next step, you should set up uh, 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 overlapping settings. And uh, for photogrammetry, I would say that minimum 60% uh, is required. Sometimes uh, 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 it's uh, it is better to increase uh, overlapping, especially for photogrammetry. For LiDAR survey, the situation is, is totally different. In this case, you can decrease overlapping up to 30% or less if you fly on a flat area, and all your data set will be correct. But with photogrammetry, you need to increase uh, overlapping. Why? As more images you have for uh, all the, the one terrain, with using of the same points next, uh, your, uh, as more images you have, is more accurate uh, terrain model or three-dimensional model will be created. And what else? And of course, you can set up overall shooting just to fly outside uh, of the area and uh, altitude mode agile or AMSA. Uh, and uh, there are some special settings for the camera, but I don't like to, to touch this question right now. And uh, there is an agile, agile tolerance uh, parameter, and we will talk about it a, a little bit later. As you can see, uh, we have a mining site, and uh, you just see us just plan mission uh, on like uh, under the flat uh, under the flat terrain. But in reality, but in reality, we have uh, 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 excavation here, and uh, we have some earthworks. So, in this case. I would suggest to fly on high altitude, for example, 20, uh, 200 meters altitude or higher, just to make preliminary survey with photogrammetry and to generate a preliminary terrain model from photogrammetry. And after that, you can uh, add this digital elevation model to UGCS. And if you, if it is, is possible to create orthophoto, it's better to create orthophoto as well and to add to UGCS. It's very simple to do, just add uh, uh, elevation, uh, just go to map layers, elevation, and then add uh, your uh, digital elevation model. And um, you can go to the map and you can add uh, orthophoto as well. So it's very simple, but after that, you can plan initially more carefully and you can follow uh, terrain with a high precision. 
But what we can face? We will face that uh, the, uh, there will be more than um, more than uh, 200 points, uh, waypoints. Why? Because our DTM or DCM is uh, very accurate and uh, ha has a lot of uh, changes in relief. In relief. In this case, I would suggest to use agile to tolerance parameter. In this case, we just increase this parameter just uh, to avoid uh, uh, changes, uh, small changes in relief, and our drone will follow the, uh, the terrain level, but without any uh, coming up and coming uh, down, uh, um, we, uh, and we, we will decrease number of waypoints as well. And as you know, all DJI system, uh, uh, all DJI systems, uh, all, all DJI drones have uh, restriction with uh, 99 uh, waypoints per mission. In this case, you can set up uh, agile, agile tolerance parameter just to increase or decrease number of waypoints as well. But be careful to, to avoid any high structures or any high buildings and so on. So you should, be, should prepare your flight carefully. And of course, we can add some actions for the camera and so on. And as soon as we set up everything in, uh, in our office, usually we click uh, offline map. We just uh, we just uh, cache all map layers in our laptop in order to to avoid any problems uh, in the field where there is no any internet connection or GSM network. And in this case, it's better to to make uh, um, uh, to cache your data set to your laptop. And what I would say that uh, DJI, oh, not DJI, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I, uh, what I would say that uh, UGC has increased productivity of, uh, of the software and increased uh, flexibility of the software. And right now you can upload your mission without connection to the drone, just to uh, just connect your tablet uh, or phone to the same Wi-Fi network. And after that, you can upload your missions to your tablet as well. So it's very good option, and uh, we we were waiting uh, for it for a long time. Mm. Okay, if you have any question concerning this part, uh, I will answer. If somebody will uh, will read these questions for me, it will be uh, more uh, more easy uh, to answer. Um, okay. Maxim, Maxim, for me, it's interesting uh, what you will answer on the question why you choose UGCS over Map MapPilot. I don't have any experience with MapPilot. Mm -hmm. uh, can you can you answer? Yes. Uh, what, uh, so, as I as already said, we need to set up our fly mission carefully, and we need to 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 make our missions uh, more efficient in comparison with the common uh, consumer software. In this case, uh, for example, if we plan our mission and our starting point um, is far from uh, our survey area, we can increase speed to the, uh, to, uh, to the survey area. In this case, we, uh, make, uh, we save uh, more time for real survey. On the other hand, uh, UGC provides a lot of uh, functions to make uh, uh, to smooth trajectory, to fly faster over the same area, to set up all things uh, together. For example, we can combine different type of missions in, in one flight. If we use three-dimensional mapping, mapping, and I will show you later in my presentation, we can combine a double grid mission with a, 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 with a oblique circle mission together in one flight, and we don't need to stop the drone, and we don't need to, uh, to, uh, to waste our flight time. And what else? As and uh, I, I think I already uh, answered the question with the uh, uh, DTM and orthophoto, which can be uploaded on my laptop and can be on all and all data set can be stored in my laptop. And I and uh, I didn't I, I don't depend on any internet connection. And of course, uh, uh, using of my own terrain level or my own DTM provide me. Uh, provide me um, more stable flights and uh, accuracy. Uh, what is the altitude limit uh, of flying uh, we are flying? In USA, it is, uh, 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 
Alexey, could you uh, could you help me to to read question and uh, what kind of question? Uh, if you find any uh, interesting question, I will answer. Uh, guys, okay. Yes, in, yes, I will try to help. Yes, in Europe, uh, uh, altitude restriction uh, by default is the same as in, in USA, one hundred twenty meters, four hundred feet. So in some cases, yes, in case of uh, uh, high, uh, uh, high trees, yes, it will not be po possible to stitch the map using X4D. Yes, of course, in this case, in order to, uh, to combine data, uh, in order to create uh, data, okay, in order to make air triangulation and to process data uh, uh, of the of the forest area, you need to increase overlapping or adds additional uh, uh, possibility, uh, additional flights like uh, double grid mission or some um, some additional flights to increase number of uh, overlapping. And we will discuss during our training for data processing, photogrammetric data processing, how to to process data in the difficult conditions. Yeah, one more. Okay, I will. I can answer uh, answer a couple mm -hmm. of questions. Uh, how the behavior of the sensor during turns? Uh, does the drone automatically decreases the speed in U, U turns? So he, here uh, on the screenshot on the uh, screen of Maxim, you can see overshot and overshot speed. So uh, you can add uh, overshot. Here is 15 meters, and you can set. <clears throat> decrease its speed. For example, on survey lines, you can have 10 meters per second. On um, uh, In overshot segments, which are outside of your survey area, you can have uh, <clears throat> reduced speed. Uh, uh, initially, it was designed uh, for magnetometers on ropes, but also <clears throat> uh, useful for photogrammetry. Uh, next question is what coordinate system I uh, need to use creating DTM. Uh, uh, you need to use WGS84. Uh, yes, uh, you can use WGS84 or any UTM projections. Uh, for example, in my uh, in my uh, example, I use just only UTM projection and uh, UGCS supports UTM as well. And uh, if we are talking about uh, how to reduce 300 waypoints to 99, you just uh, increase, uh, you, you, sh you just need to increase agile tolerance uh, number just to decrease number of uh, waypoints. It's, it's simple. Uh, Uh, yes, uh, and final question, uh, does it possible to calculate in UGCS proper path for LIDAR to achieve expected parameters for 20 or 30 overlap uh, percent? I'm asking about LIDAR photogrammetry. Yes, and I will show you in my future uh, part of presentation. Okay, if uh, we don't have any questions, I will move on to another one part of presentation. And right now, I, I, I'm just sh I'm, uh, I just showed the... Uh, I showed you, uh, I just shown, I just shown uh, the result of survey of uh, open pit uh, area and where we need to fly uh, exactly on the terrain level in order to get uh, the same resolution for the images in order to get very good accuracy of, uh, of for future volume calculation and so on. And I just show you how to use UGCS, uh, how to cache your data set, how to plan mission, just simple mission. But next step, what I am going to talk, ah, and I would like to show you a real project. Uh, we just made uh, uh, results of real projects. We just made survey of the, of the mining site area. And uh, during this survey, we just use uh, uh, photogrammetry to create three-dimensional map and uh, JS layers of this mining site. And, uh, and we use uh, G, uh, GPR system installed on Matrix uh, 600 with UGCS as well, but it is another one story and we can talk about it uh, maybe during next presentation, but we achieve very good results to measure, uh, um, um, uh, to use GPR as well. And uh, right now I would like to show you only one part of this work, when we create three-dimensional map and when we create JS layer of, uh, of mining site uh, using 
uh, uh, using uh, Mavic to Pro PPK. What does it mean Mavic to Pro PPK? We use just uh, we just uh, take uh, original Mavic, and after that we we install additional GNSS receiver on the top of the drone, and we connect with GNSS receiver precisely to the, to DJI system to capture photo events. As a result, after data post processing after flight, we will get very precise position of each photo, which can be used for uh, for photogrammetric data processing. And as as we found out uh, later. Um, uh, only this way provides possibility to remove rolling shutter distortion without using of ground control points. And as a result, Mavic to, uh, you can convert Mavic to Pro from a uh, consumer drone to a professional survey system, and you will achieve three or five centimeter accuracy definitely. And you can add uh, some, and you can read about a lot of tests, and you can uh, talk with our clients, and they prove that uh, this accuracy is easy to achieve. And uh, our workflow in the field was we install a base station, we prepare a fly mission, and in this area there, there was no any internet connection as well. And we, we make flight, and after that we post-process uh, GNSS data, create very precise trajectory of the flight. After that we assign precise coordinates of the images to uh, two images inside of Exeget, and after that we process data set and fix with the mapper software and create three-dimensional mod model and maps. And um, uh, it's just example of our survey area. We use uh, MLE Genesis receiver as a base station. And uh, people from a mining company was very surprised when we come to the area without a huge box of the equipment. We just use only a small Genesis receiver and we just uh, take the drone with us uh, in a small backpack and nothing else. But we should make a survey over, over the um, over the 1,800 square meters, uh, and, uh, and and uh, the requirements of the uh, of the agreement uh, with the company, we should uh, we have to pro we have to provide uh, um, we had to deliver products within uh, two weeks after the uh, after field works. Uh, what kind of product? Maps and uh, orthophoto and three dimensional model. And of course, we use UGCS to plan mission. And we, uh, when, and we, for uh, for one area, we made eight flights, and all these flights was prepared with UGCS. But before the flight, with, uh, before before the survey flight, we made the preliminary flight to make a pre-dimensional preliminary pre-dimensional model. We uploaded to UGCS as soon as the terrain level on the mining site was changed uh, uh, was changed a lot. And after that, we upload uh, our own uh, digital elevation model or the photo, prepare a mission, and fly carefully uh, without any problems uh, over the terrain level. What next? Uh, what next? Uh, the next step uh, we uh, we capture data set from the drone here. There is a SD card, and we just remove SD card to get the Rhinox files, uh, UBX files from the drone. We remove this D card from the drone to get uh, photos, and with using of uh, with using of our uh, Topo Setter software, which provides possibility to post-process GNSS data and to uh, to make a connection between coordinates and images uh, and geotech images uh, in automatic mode, and it works in any coordinate system. You can add your own coordinate system. You can add your own elevation uh, model like geoid and so on. And um, after post-processing, we, we receive a set of uh, images with precise coordinates inside of XZTX. We make uh, we made uh, photogrammetry processing with Pix4D mapper. And as I already said, that Pix4D provides the best option for removing uh, rolling shutter distortion. Why? Because the camera of uh, DJI Mavic has a rolling shutter, uh, rolling shutter. And after that, we achieved such accuracy, and accuracy was between three and five centimeters. And now, uh, customer check it uh, with a uh, Genesis receiver on the side. And after that, we create a three-dimensional model. And what I would say that Pix4D, Pix4D mapper provides very good detailed uh, uh, three-dimensional model. And this model was uh, was captured from 90 meters altitude. And uh, as you can see, we reconstruct uh, all details of mining site such as buildings, power lines, uh, power poles, uh, any hedges, walls, uh, any construction sites. 
and it can be easily automatically classified in pixel d mapper and as a result of data processing as soon as we got very detailed point cloud automatic point cloud classification was made uh, in, in the high level and this one one example of uh, three dimensional model uh, of power lines and uh, power poles and uh, any um, bars uh, gates and so on and uh, as a result uh, we classify terrain we remove all uh, all uh, all vegetation and we create uh, contour lines and after that uh, and this one is an example of details of three dimensional point cloud uh, generated by pixel mapper and after that we uh, vectorize uh, point cloud to to create break lines to vectorize all buildings uh, walls and so on and uh, as a result uh, and finally uh, on the basis of classification of point cloud we create uh, contour lines and we create uh, uh, Cut, cut, uh, cut data set uh, for our customer. This, is, it, this one is the result of data processing. And on, on these uh, slides, uh, uh, it, it looks very simple, but in reality, we, uh, to provide high quality data set, to provide accuracy, we should set up camera in appropriate way. We should fly on a good altitude. We should follow terrain. Uh, we, we should uh, make a survey, we should split all area, uh, we should split huge area for the small parts to fly, and uh, there was no any internet connection, and uh, as a result, only UGCS can be used in this, in these cases. I don't know any another one software which can provide such possibility. I think this one is the answer to your question, why we choose UGCS, so why we don't use my file. Uh, this one is just uh, examples of uh, cut data set created with using of uh, uh, with using of our equipment and uh, UGCS software and pix 3 d mapper software. And now I'm going to move on another part of my presentation. It's a photogrammetric survey for three-dimensional mapping, uh, for three D uh, high realistic three D modeling. In this case. Uh, I would like to show results of some uh, real project uh, made in um, uh, in, the mid, uh, in one Middle East country, and uh, it was very huge project for mapping. And uh, for mapping, we just use only uh, for three D modeling. And for three D modeling, we just use several Phantom 4 Pro upgraded by our PPK system. Why? Because we don't use any ground contour points, and we don't spend time for measuring them. We just use our PPK system to stitch all the images together. And we use special equipment installed on the, on the car to make photos from the ground as well. And uh, we use uh, MLEAD base station uh, to pro, uh, to, uh, for post-processing. And uh, we, uh, we just uh, use uh, UGCS to mission planning. First of all, we divide all area for different uh, area of survey. Uh, it was 12 areas survey. Uh, we create camel file and upload it to UGCS. Then uh, uh, um, we, sh we have to make a lot of uh, missions. First of all, we need to make a survey uh, of a Nadir mission uh, just to, pro uh, to capture Nadir images. It was a basis for future photogrammetric data processing. And we, uh, we divide uh, the area for 12 <laughs> for 12 parts and we add uh, and we capture all 12, 12 parts and uh, uh, by uh, with the Nadir images and we set up all necessary parameters. After that, we have to, to add some additional images to create three-dimensional model of, uh, of building uh, structure and so on, some architectural parameters and so on. And in this case, there are two ways. Uh, there are two ways how to capture these images. First of all, you can fly with double grid mission with uh, with an angle of forty five degrees, uh, with a, uh, to point the camera to forty five degrees. But you should turn your uh, flight angle uh, to forty five degrees uh, um, in comparison with your Nadir images, and you you fly with uh, uh, if. Uh, but we arrange these flights for the area where there were a lot of buildings and uh, it's not possible to make oblique flights. It's just possible to make double grid mission, but with 45 degrees camera and all this area was rotated. Uh, what else? 
Next, we plan uh, uh, we plan oblique uh, flights around buildings, which was uh, uh, we, we, uh, we are separate from other buildings, and we fly with uh, oblique images, and we plan all, all image uh, all flight missions with uh, uh, UGCS as well. And finally, we capture some photos from the car with our equipment. And uh, as a result, we create a very detailed three-dimensional model. As soon as we capture all buildings from different sides of view, and we combine different type of uh, acquisition, as a result, we achieve three and five centimeter accuracy, and we capture it, 120,000 images. It's reality. So we captured 120,000 of images and we post-process data and we use uh, special technology in our post-processing software where we use batch processing. We just uh, set up uh, per one day, we process uh, more, than 10, uh, more than 10 flights uh, from one drone, uh, but we use uh, two drones. So 20 flights should be post-processed and we uh, should process it automatically. And we create special batch processing option, which is available in our software, which is provided with, uh, together with our drones. And as a result, we create very detailed three-dimensional model. And additionally, this using of, uh, uh, of uh, photogrammetry survey uh, from, uh, uh, from the ground, we achieve very good detailed model under the coverages and uh, 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 on the ground, as well on the ground. And uh, uh, I would like to show you some example of this model. and. Uh, um, it was not possible to achieve such model, to create such model with, uh, uh, with the common techniques, with the common software, with, uh, because we need to set up everything uh, together. And, we, and all this survey was made within a few weeks. Uh, what else? Just example of this three-dimensional model, and we have special training for three-dimensional modeling if you need how to achieve very good accuracy and so on. So uh, in this case, I finished my part of presentation of photogrammetry and how to use uh, UGCS for real photogrammetry work in a hard uh, conditions. And if you uh, have any questions right now, we can, uh, I can answer. Yes, thank you, Maxim. Uh, we have already used one hour of the webinar, so we have to go a little bit quickly further. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so a quick... Um, I think we have a lot of questions. Maybe uh, after presentation, uh, we can yes. answer it. Uh, but it's better to have a direct um, talking with the guys because it's so many questions. Of course. Maybe we can expand some time of webinar. Oh, we just finished webinar right now. Just uh, asking, uh, answering. No, questions. we are not not, fin not not so that we are finishing. Just uh, we have to be a, a little bit. Uh, but I can more uh, quickly, talk about quickly, lidar yes. uh, survey later. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Let's continue. Uh, and now I'm going to talk about uh, lidar survey. Uh, in general, as I already said, that uh, before. When I don't use LiDAR, uh, and uh, before, we, before we invented our own LiDAR system, I supposed to buy one of LiDAR, but it was so expensive. The price of LiDAR was approximately $100,000 or $50,000 and so on. It is very expensive to install on the drone. And before, this LiDAR system was so heavy, so you can uh, use only uh, six motor drones like uh, Matrix 600, but all these drones uh, don't have any obstacle avoidance system. And it was uh, not so safe to fly with these drones. But, and uh, after that, we started to design our solution for LiDAR survey. Right now we designed it, uh, uh, LiDAR equipment and we use very high precision IMU inside. And we use, we use Genesis receiver inside and uh, SSD, uh, SSD disk inside and microcomputer inside. But the total weight of this system, for example, this one is less than one kilo. It's uh, our LiDAR uh, 100 uh, and the weight is less than one kilo and it can be installed on any DJI drone or any uh, fixed wing drone. And after that, we created the same solution with uh, 
uh, Veladine head, uh, uh, which works on uh, 200 meters altitude, uh, and uh, it is uh, the Padron LiDAR 200 Ultra, and uh, the weight of the system, one kilo and 100 grams. So you can use it on the drone, and flight time on this drone is uh, from 26 minutes up to 38 minutes, depends on the type of matrix 200 uh, or matrix 50. And as, as you can see, it can be easily integrated with a DJI system, just like a plug and play. You just install it to original DJI connect. And you can connect it to original DJI uh, camera, like X4S camera, like this one. Or you, you can use it uh, with another one camera, install camera here. There is a special connector for the camera to install camera like Sony camera and so on. And it will capture photo events, everything, and it will uh, manage the camera as well by LiDAR. Um, what else? Uh, and of course, as soon as we use 360 degree view LiDAR system, it can be installed in the backpack and it will be provide very good accuracy as a backpack as well. And you can capture some uh, data set, which is, which uh, you can capture some data which are not available from, uh, from the air. You just walk uh, on the street or install it in the backpack and sit in your uh, car and so on. And um, there are, uh, I just uh, leave these uh, parameters of our LiDAR system and you can read it and uh, save it uh, for future understanding. And as you can see, we use very high precision IMU which uh, and a uh, very high precision Genesis receiver, everything you need and um, and um, uh, and working altitude for my, uh, for LiDAR 100 is uh, 70 meters and you can fly easily with 70 meters altitude. So uh, it's not forbidden to fly with such altitude uh, in any country. And uh, with uh, uh, LiDAR 200, you can fly within uh, 150 up to 170 meters altitude, but working range in 200 meters. Uh, what else? And um, coverage area of this LiDAR is uh, from uh, 70 meters altitude is 150 meters uh, wide of the area. And this one cover 250 meters as well, up to 300. And uh, I would like to show you some example of our work uh, when we, uh, we provided uh, uh, training for our client. We, uh, we installed LiDAR system on, on the existing Matrix 200 RTK. I think RTK is useless for Matrix 200, but uh, the client used this drone. He already had uh, Matrix 210 drone RTK. We installed uh, our LiDAR on the drone and installed additional Genesis receiver on the drone. And we use some ground control points to check the accuracy and, and we install a base station. And after that, we prepare flight, uh, LiDAR flight mission. And uh, let me talk about LiDAR flight mission in more details. First of all, we need to make a calibration flight like infinity and with UGCS, you can do it easily. Of course, you can fly uh, infinity in the air by your hands, but uh, if you are not a professional pilot and you need to, uh, all time you need to fly um, calibration flight, in this case, it's better to use predefined settings in UGCS and create uh, uh, this mission, uh, this part of the mission. And after that, uh, you can use two tools, uh, two different tools for uh, for planning uh, LiDAR survey. First, uh, first tool, it's uh, uh, area scan. In this case, you know uh, the coverage of each LiDAR. For example, uh, we know the coverage of this type of LiDAR, it's 150 meters. Another tool, uh, to arrange 30% overlapping between uh, roads, I would suggest to set up uh, 100 meters uh, wide uh, and so on. Uh, uh, what else? Uh, we just uh, set up all settings here. We set up altitude, we uh, make a follow terrain mode, and we set up uh, um, range between, uh, uh, between our uh, flight passes and nothing else, and we set up a flight uh, speed. For LiDAR, uh, uh, one, uh, for our uh, smallest LiDAR, you can fly up to 100, oh, one, uh, 
you can fly with the speed up to 10 meters per second and you will get a uh, point cloud with density of 150 points per uh, square meters with this system at the same fly uh, speed you will achieve 350 uh, points per square meters but you can fly higher and you will cover a huger area in this case but uh, if we fly uh, with such parameters uh, we couldn't uh, uh, capture photos we can capture photos, but uh, we couldn't uh, combine uh, stitch all photos together because for uh, photogrammetry, it's better to provide 60% overlapping. And we are, if we are flying uh, around uh, uh, above uh, forest area, we need to increase overlapping. To need uh, we need to decrease uh, uh, de de decrease distance between uh, flight roads. In this case, uh, we can use photogrammetry mission as well. And uh, with photogrammetry mission, as you can see, we should fly much more. And this is very good question. If you are, uh, ask me uh, how we can uh, increase efficiency, in this case, I would say you should fly uh, uh, with the lidar uh, separately with lidar with thirty percent of your lapping. And after that, you can use any our existing PPP, PPP drone and fly on a higher altitude with a, a 60 or 80 percent overlapping, but with a higher altitude. In this case, you don't need to buy expensive camera to colorize point cloud. You just use our PPK system and use our LiDAR at the same time, but with different flights. And you know that UGCS provides possibility to fly at the same time as well. So you can fly easily with one person who, who will drive two drones at the same time. For example, one drone will fly on altitude 120 meters like uh, Mavic 2 Pro. It's just to capture photo, to colorize point cloud. And uh, LiDAR will fly on 70 meters altitude at the same time. And this is one, it's the main advantage of uh, uh, UGCS as well. You can, uh, you can manage huge uh, several flights at the same time and you can stop the drone one drone and uh, fly with the second drone and so on so um, in this case uh, uh, I just show you how to plan photogrammetry mission how to combine this photogrammetry and what I would like to uh, to show you in real time right now how to process lidar data and as, as you remember, I already said that LiDAR data processing and generation of point clouds takes, uh, will take less than 20 minutes. And the, uh, the longest time, it's uh, Genesis data post-processing. It will take you uh, up to 10 minutes to post-process Genesis data together with IMU. And I will uh, uh, skip this uh, step. I just uh, show you the result of uh, data processing. Uh, for, so, and let's talk about uh, LiDAR data processing shortly in a, in a very uh, short period. First of all, we need to post-process Genesis data together with IMU. For these futures, you can use um, uh, inertial explorer software, post pack software, or our uh, Autopandron cloud-based software to post-process uh, Genesis data together with IMU. After that, you need to generate point cloud. And Point cloud generation will take one of two minutes per one flight. And after that, you need to make strip alignment and uh, uh, create a, a, a final uh, three dimensional point cloud. And you need to make uh, uh, some sorts of classification and uh, future data processing. And I would like to show you within a few minutes. So, uh, uh, first of all, we need to post process Genesis data together with IMU to create very precise trajectory. And as you can see, we process the same trajectory of the same area. And uh, you see some points with the numbers. It's a position of which photo, which was captured by our Genesis receiver, which installed inside of uh, um, LiDAR. And as a result, we, we, we already uh, achieved, uh, we already compute uh, precise trajectory of, the, of, of the, our, our drone. And we, uh, we calculated precise position of each photo. And after that, we need to use a uh, uh, Topodron software. I will uh, move to this software. This software calls uh, Topolidar. Uh, just a moment, I will find it. Uh, just a moment. Okay, uh, so right now I will run Topolidar software. Uh, ah, it's already, uh, it was. 
already predefined. So uh, after uh, uh, after Genesis data post processing, uh, do you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, yes after Genesis data processing, I have very precise trajectory, uh, which just can be uploaded uh, to to the top asset, uh, top Topolidar software. It's a post trajectory post file. And uh, it's already uploaded here. Then I choose uh, pickup file. It's a raw lidar data from uh, from a VLA that I had. Then I uh, select a part of uh, uh, part of trajectory where I would like to create a, a point cloud like this one. After that, uh, as soon as I select a part of trajectory which uh, uh, which I would like to use for uh, for point cloud creation. I just select output uh, coordinate system and we support any geoids and we support any coordinate system as well. And after that, uh, I just click uh, start button. And uh, let's, uh, uh, and system will compute uh, LiDAR point cloud and, uh, we sh uh, and uh, our software shows it in real time. And uh, to tell the truth, it will take you a few minutes to generate point cloud from one file. It is, it's totally unbelievable. If we compare a point cloud with a photogrammetry, it will take you, uh, I think, uh, to generate the same point cloud from this photogrammetry, it will take you a few hours or uh, uh, 10 hours or one night to generate point cloud. But with the LiDAR equipment, you just, achieve this, uh, the same data set, you will get the same data set within one or two minutes. And uh, after point cloud generation, we will look at uh, uh, um, at the time. Okay, uh, as soon as we uh, generated point cloud, we need to open this point cloud in the uh, additional software like LiDAR 360, like TerraScan to make strip alignment. And it is very simple and I would like to show you. Uh, just wait while our uh, software generate point cloud. And, uh, and we will uh, get the result. So uh, right now our point cloud is generated, was generated, and it took uh, it took us uh, one minute and forty five seconds. And now we will upload it to uh, lidar three hundred sixty software. And we upload this point cloud. Uh, just uh, point cloud which was generated. The next step, we should open a uh, strip alignment uh, uh, interface and we should upload the trajectory first. And uh, our software generate uh, uh, trajectory in a local coordinate system as well. And as soon as we upload trajectory, we should select appropriate fields. and uh, click apply and our trajectory is shown on the map as, as you remember we remove all uh, parts of uh, infinity of uh, trajectory and uh, finally we we should split this trajectory to separate flights and uh, uh, and we will create separate uh, flight uh, uh, and we will create a, a separate point cloud. I lost to open the window because it's too. Mm -hmm.
and this and uh, software will will split coin cloud to separate flights And uh, I think it's uh, uh, it is most uh, long, it is the longest part of our data processing right now because uh, okay we just split uh, our uh, our point cloud to separate flights and we can colorize them uh, on the basis of color of trajectory. And finally, what we should do, we should calculate. Uh, uh, delta roll and pitch uh, and heading angles uh, due to uh, uh, it's uh, we will talk uh, we, we can talk it about it later because of the timing and finally we calculate um, uh, delta angles and uh, our data set is ready and we apply this correction to data set And finally, after applying uh, correction of the angles for, for each flight, uh, we can merge all flights together. And, and after that, we can check the accuracy. I will uh, skip this step of merging. I already have a merged point cloud, but I would like, uh, just would like to save time for Evgeny. And I will open a uh, merged uh, point cloud. And this one, it's a point cloud for, from a LiDAR survey. And I can colorize it by elevation. And uh, now uh, you see that we fly with a hard to reach area with a lot of trees. And we can easily classify terrain here. Uh, what we can do, we just click classify. And we just spend a few minutes to get classified uh, terrain level. And of course, we can check the accuracy with ground control points, which was which we measured with our client. To uh, we, me we measure all ground control points together. But just uh, uh, just let's spend few minutes to look how fast we can classify terrain level with a uh, 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 lidar point cloud. And this lidar point cloud was created within few minutes. It's amazing. So you can achieve, uh, you can get your results in the field at the same time. So you can provide your customers uh, with a uh, precise terrain level with the same day after the flight. And this one, it's a uh, uh, terrain level. And let's create uh, control lines. Maybe while it's processing, we have one question. Uh, why? Uh, and we created the contour lines, and let's uh, have a look how accurate these contour lines are. And uh, it's amazing. Uh, and it's not possible to achieve with the photogrammetry at all in such deep uh, vegetation area. And what else? Uh, and uh, and uh, what else? And of course, we can check the accuracy as well. I just load to some ground control points.
As I already said, that with ground control points uh, were measured together with our client, and you can talk with our client as well, that it is uh, measured uh, in an appropriate way. And let's check the accuracy of uh, uh, ground control points. I will increase the size. And we measure some ground control points on the road and so on. Uh, and we try to measure it in a, in a forest area, but uh, we couldn't achieve fixed solution at all. Uh, we have some points, but they were not so accurate. Uh, let's check uh, the accuracy. This one point, uh, we just uh, create a slice of a point cloud. And as you can see, uh, And let's measure the accuracy of this point up to point cloud. It's just one of three centimeters accuracy, definitely. And if we measure all points, uh, you can download this raw data set with the GCPs, with everything you need from our website. And you can check and you can process your data set. And this one, it's a ground control point. Uh, it's the same area. And you see that it is uh, has, has uh, 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 the same accuracy within one or two or three centimeters. So what I would say, I would say that, uh, but uh, how we can comp how, how we can compare photogrammetry and lidar? I think photogrammetry is an affordable solution. But when you make a survey with photogrammetry, you you should take into account a lot of settings like a lighting condition, like uh, uh, overlapping, like uh, level of noises. Lidar is uh, is more simple to process, is, fa fa uh, is faster to process. Uh, and, uh, but you can combine photogrammetry and LiDAR when you, can, uh, when you would like to get a colorized point cloud. In this case, you need to add some part of photogrammetry just to align images. And after then you can colorize your point cloud. And I would like to show you the example of colorized point cloud, uh, which was created uh, from the same flight uh, with RGB camera installed on Matrix 200. Uh, uh, we use uh, uh, X4S Matrix 200 camera uh, uh, combined with LiDAR. So if you use your own existence Matrix 200 or Matrix 300 and 10, 300 or Matrix 200 and 10 RTK, you can easily install LiDAR system like this one. And you can use your existing camera to colorize point cloud, but you need to modify camera to capture photo events to get very precise position of each photo. In this case, I think your productivity will, uh, uh, your efficiency will be increased in, uh, in 10 times or more. And uh, if you have any question, I can answer, or we can, uh, we, we will allow to Evgeny to show his results. What do you, th what do you think, uh, Alexei? Max, uh, uh, I think uh, let Evgeny start and uh, you can write answers in uh, Q&A window. Okay, okay. I, I will have a small rest and then uh, I will uh, write answers, okay? Okay, so uh, thank, you. thank you, Maxim. I should say that uh, I never saw such, uh, such uh, <coughs> high resolution results of 3D reconstruction from photogrammetry. <laughs> Never, and uh, your results with LiDAR is very impressive. Uh, thank you, and uh, I hope uh, our users will uh, prove uh, the same uh, the same quality and accuracy as well. Okay, thank you, and I will uh, leave you, and I will answer your questions. Yeah, thank you, Maxim. So probably you see my screen at the moment. Uh, I would it's like connecting. To, yeah. Yes, connecting. I would like 
to introduce myself. So I'm uh, Yevgeny Lopatin. I'm working as a researcher at Natural Resources Institute Finland. And uh, we were very much interested to, to, to see what kind of how the different tools can be used at the moment for tree-wise forest management inventory. And uh, today we I, I would like to cover like uh, two topics, uh, this close range photogrammetry, which is from my point of view only possible if you use UCGS, UGCS. And then I would like to cover a little bit on laser scanning to uh, continue the talk of Maxim to show like how the laser scanning data could be applied in practice and what kind of results we get out of it. I'm uh, doing research and uh, almost 14 years I am flying drones and I'm a forest owner in Finland so I'm managing own forests and also I do a lot of research nowadays on digital technologies for practical forest management. We also use drones for forest fires forecasting. We also use drones for early detection of pests and diseases. Nowadays bark beetle is a huge issue and we are uh, uh, but today I would like to talk more about uh, uh, practical and technical applications. In our research, we developed an approach for tree-wise forest management inventory. And this approach is based on the photogrammetry. So the uh, idea is very simple. Like if you take a, a normal drone, you could of course build, for example, three-dimensional model, but then you need a lot of ground control points, which is not feasible in forest conditions. And that's why we started to use topo drone solutions. So it means we could, for example, uh, get precise coordinates of the pictures. Uh, and then uh, through our data processing platform, we can recalculate uh, into 3D models, and then we could get crowns. And then for each crown of the tree, we can identify the species and then measure, for example, uh, tree height, and then evaluate the diameter. So this is our general workflow which we, are, we developed and we have a completely automated system which can be used for large area mapping. For example, we recently completed projects where we mapped hundreds of thousands of hectares of big areas in different parts of the world. And uh, in our research, we also were wanted to test different consumer drones, so-called like drones, what you could get from the market for such kind of applications. And uh, one of the results is that if you use this consumer drone, your accuracy of your height measurements of your object, especially if you start to model, for example, do three dimensional models, they'll be relatively low. So inside the model, the accuracy will be good, but absolute accuracy of the result will be not so good. So you could get errors up to six meters, for example, in height estimation. So what we did, we, we used the solution developed by Topodrone, here one of the oldest version. So by adding this GNSS device, you could increase accuracy of your georeferencing to a very high level. And then this could be used for, for example, for tree-wise forest man management inventory. And uh, in my research, I, I was once faced a situation that, okay, you do know how to inv inventory the trees, you do know how to inventory the, the forest, but are there any opportunities to inventory the, for example, young forest plantations? In case of Finland, if you harvested the forest, then you need to plant new forest, you need to regenerate the forest, and you need to plant new trees. And of course, not all the trees will survive. And it means uh, uh, kind of practically, you, we are investing about uh, half euro per tree. And if you think about like uh, planting norm, uh, the value of this investment is about 1,100 170 euro per hectare. And uh, uh, to inventory those trees, you could use this kind of rubber boots method. So you can wear rubber boots and then go and count, which is not very efficient. And the most problem with this traditional kind of rubber boots method, you don't have uh, coordinates or it would take a lot of time to measure those. And uh, um, for us, for our research, it was very important to identify the location of the seedlings and then also classify the uh, health status of the seedling. If the seedling dead, for example, we can plant a new one. And here to solve this issue, I had a, a lot of challenges like how I can fly in partly open area. So when, for example, you fly in a completely open area, like Maxim presented today with the carrier, it's relatively easy. But what if you have already some trees in between and uh, uh, how to fly in such kind of solutions? And if my first idea was, okay, let's use, for example, this Mavic and let's rely on its obstacle avoidance sensors. Uh, I made one flight, it was successful. On the second flight, Mavic crashed. 
it was simply uh, was not able the obstacle avoid the sensor was not able to solve a solution to where to fly if it it was between couple of trees so uh, it was very funny story like uh, the drone found the area uh, it was surrounding by three different trees and this uh, very fasc fascinated uh, kind of uh, hardware was not able to make a decision to which area to, to which direction to go and then the tree the drone was crushed so I started to think like how to solve it. And uh, uh, thanks to UGCS, uh, we have now opportunity to have like two step inventory process. So the first stage you, you could get like so-called a big picture to map the obstacles. And then you could use the UGCS uh, uh, features to do this so-called called the smart flight. And uh, uh, in my case, I used, for example, Mavic 2 Pro to fly very close to up to five meter altitude for photogrammetrical uh, purposes. And how to do it? Uh, you could get, for example, this after the first flight. You can see, you see the, uh, you have the, we have the digital surface model as the input data into it. And I just zoom into it. You can see, you see very clearly. So the big standing trees, they can be used as an obstacle. And uh, uh, using UGCS, you can guarantee that the drone will not go into the forest. It will be not crashed into the forest. But moreover, in, uh, this is a not a flat surface. There is, of course, uh, some changes in, in elevation. In this particular site, the uh, elevation difference was about 35 meter altitude. So to cover completely the area, it, it's almost impossible you know, to do this kind of uh, 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 easy flight if you, for example, use Pix4D or MapPilot or other software. So uh, I first used, for example, Pix4D and I was not happy with the results because I was not able to vary the flying altitude. And in my case, in case of uh, close range photogrammetry, uh, in order to be able to see those very small seedlings, this is the example. So the height of the seedling is only 14 centimeters. The only way to see it is to fly it from the altitude of five meters. And here on this slide, you can see, we first we produced this map uh, flying this from 120 meters. And then we had a, to develop the method we established uh, intensive research plots. So then we repeated by flying those re research plots at the altitude of five meters. So we, using UGCS, it is possible to make five meter flights. Why we wanted to have five meter flights? Look at this picture. This is a picture from a drone. So if you start to interpret here, there is a not only seedling, but there are all many other objects. Like you could have a grasses, you could have other trees, etc. So the only way to automate the data processing is to process this data not as a uh, uh, two-dimensional data, just a mosaic, but the only way you need to reconstruct the photogrammetric point cloud. And for this purpose, you need to fly in double grid on very low altitude to be able to derive really detailed fine scale photogrammetric model. So at the moment we, uh, from five meter altitude, you can build a point cloud with a uh, uh, distance between the points, uh, which is around five millimeter. So if you think about like resolution, so it's like five millimeter per pixel of, of the data, which is very promising. And I think there are many other applications, especially in agriculture. For me, it was important to see small seedlings and to be able to map the small seedlings. So here, mm -hmm. This approach, and I see very clear, very clear advantage of using the software to uh, be able to fly at very low altitudes. Then, uh, if you use a photogrammetry anyway, there are challenges. For example, one of the challenge of this method that, uh, of course, it is possible, but uh, uh, in terms of productivity, you really need to do a lot of flights and a lot of data collection. So we were started to look. Okay, what could be any benefit of using lidar? And we invited Topo Drone to make a test, and we wanted to test the equipment, and uh, uh, we wanted to see um, how it will work. What if if we will be flying not in springtime or in summertime, but what if if we will fly, fly during the night, and what could we could get out of it? So we uh, made this test in December. So we use UGCS uh, software to fly the to um, plan the flight. 
Then we, inst we installed the Topo drone uh, LiDAR on our equipment uh, with the GNSS receiver. It was one of the questions in your chat box, what kind of GNSS receiver, uh, GNSS equipment you are using for, uh, uh, for the base station. So we, we use this uh, latest MLEAD device with two frequencies GNSS receiver, which works very well in, in our conditions. And then we made it, first we fly this area with a drone, and then I suggested, okay, let's put uh, this uh, LiDAR on my backpack and let's drive a quiet bike over the forest and see what kind of accuracy we could get. So first to the uh, uh, results of aerial laser scanning. From Matrice to 110, from 70 meter altitude, you could get very accurate point cloud because here, uh, it's, I think it's one of the uh, value, additional value, what you could get also from UGGS, because if you know the topography of your, of your survey, then you don't need to uh, spend your energy to extra overlap or to extra movements in order to compensate your flights. So I think here the UGCS allows you to save your flight time. And if it's you're saving your flight time, it means you can get bigger coverage of the areas and you, you, you increase efficiency of your work. So as a result, we've got this point cloud from LiDAR, then we were able to classify the points as Maxim presented very easily. We were able to build super detailed digital elevation model, but then, for us, it was very important also to evaluate the trees. So what we did, we normalized point cloud by digital animation model. And immediately in a field, we were able to get the result. You can see here that uh, red are commercially valuable trees, green are young stands, and blue is presented by ground. So if you think about point density, how much you could get from this uh, uh, topo drone LiDAR version 100 with matrix 207 from 70 meter altitude, average uh, uh, point density was about, let's say 150 points per square meter. Of course, you can see here on the slide that this density was higher uh, uh, on uh, below the uh, under the drone. And if you, you see, you can see from this data, from this density picture, you can see the flying pattern. So, uh, but you can vary it quite a lot and, and then configure it properly to achieve the needed density. And what you could get out of it is this uh, point cloud can be automatically classified very quickly into the trees. So you can see here, every single tree is identified and colored by different color. And you measure uh, the uh, tree height with very high accuracy. So we are talking, we are able to measure tree height here with accuracy from three to five centimeters. We are also can calculate the crown projection area, crown diameter, but uh, unfortunately we do not always see in this point cloud the tree diameter and in traditional forest inventory you need still to go to forest establish sample plots to be able to, to measure uh, uh, to in, uh, kind of extrapolate or to recalculate your results using tree height using species using crown diameter in, into the uh, tree diameter and then I suggested, okay, let's use this technology further. And what we did, we, we used exactly the same LiDAR. We installed it into the quad bike. And then we started to drive with Maxim quad bike over this area and walk around. So we were able to get to collect a huge number of points from 360 degrees and average distance uh, from the scanner was about 70 meters from 7100 meters. And uh, of course, you, we had some noise in the data, but this noise can be easily removed by the filtering the distance. For example, sources of noise were quad bike in the point cloud shoulders, heads or colleague or something like this. But by, by, for example, removing points which are very close to you, you can really reduce uh, 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 amount of this noise. And then we could also play with the angles because if you properly select the angles, you can crystallize the point cloud. And if let's look again, what was the density of the points, what we were able to get from quad bike. So on average, we were able to get uh, something uh, up to um, uh, 500 points Per, on average per, per square meter. In some areas where we, we moved slowly, the number of points was higher. On areas where we moved faster, the number of points was, was lower. And uh, 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 this information is extremely useful because if you fly your drone, and then if you fly, if you go with quad bike, you could get a such kind of dense point cloud with such kind of level details that you can measure automatically the crown di tree diameter. 
You don't need to go to the field. You don't need to take caliper. You can just measure a lot of features directly from the point cloud. And imagine here we had, uh, uh, we were uh, uh, driving the quad bike about half an hour. And in half an hour, we automatically measured 4,169 trees. If I would imagine the same work done traditionally with caliper, I would spend 70 days, uh, eight hours per day working. So, which is very, very hard and it would, would require a lot of resources. So this is, I think, very big opportunity. So in case of like uh, laser scanning in Finland, it's not new. In Finland, uh, we started to use laser scanning data already for many decades. Uh, public data is available, so you can go to internet and download even raw data and process data. So the first uh, forest inventory program at the moment in country, the density was one point per square meter. The new program, which is now going, it's five, min five points per square meter. This drone, with UGCS software, you are able to derive a point cloud from the air from uh, 150 points per square meter. If you add something like quad bike, you could get uh, almost 500 points per square meter. So if you think about forest resource assessment, using a LIDAR, it's uh, practically like a zoom on your forest structure. And I think it's a, it's a future and combination of those two methods for data collection uh, is allowing to get really uh, additional value from data fusion you can change drone flying parameters to achieve the terrestrial density and you can measure the angles from the, uh, from the air. For what force this data could be used? So you can, for example, identify quite many parameters which would improve the, uh, uh, for example, uh, trees valuation, such as crowds, bait height, straightness of the stem. For example, you can identify immediately wrong trees or wrong stems. You can measure uh, indirectly uh, uh, age of the trees. You could evaluate wood quality, wood assortments, and get precise valuation of the stems. And uh, I think the opportunities what UGS offer, UCGS is offering right now is the opportunity to run precision forestry and uh, to do more precise inventories. But of course, with laser scanning, it is possible also to do inventories during the winter time and during the night time. Nowadays, uh, um, laser scanners are, are everywhere. So, for example, uh, if you buy a new iPhone, you could get even laser scanner inside. But here, in, those, in many laser scanners, those are based on uh, uh, so-called uh, slum technology. And uh, I think the advantage of the equipment what is offered by Topo Drone is you, can, you, you are not using slum. You are able to reference your point cloud. For example, imagine you can take your iPhone and you could get very very nice laser scan scan of your of your of your of your room. But what if if you go to field, then you're in troubles because you need to georeference your laser your your scan, and which is impossible without ground control points. And uh, so that's why I think uh, the opportunities which are offered for UGS UGS software and Topodrone laser scanners are really great. And at this stage, I would be very happy to answer any questions if there are some in, uh, in, uh, uh, in our discussion today. Thank you, Evgeny. It's very interesting always to see real cases, real applications. So yes, it's, it's like great. Um, Maxim, had you the opportunity to choose some more questions which we could ask? And, or uh... Uh, I think we can uh, we can answer together with Evgeny uh, all of his questions and uh, uh, concerning uh, if we are talking about uh, unanswered uh, questions. Uh, 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 about drone harmony, uh, harmony I, I'm not sure. Uh, I think uh, you just says have, have some advantages as well. Uh, Sabine, could you read some questions and I will uh, answer them. Uh, what what do you think is um, uh, which are important? I will answer. So yes, here we have uh, which GNSS base station do you use? Uh, as I already said, uh, I would you can use any GNSS survey grade GNSS receiver as a base station, but I would suggest to use Rich RS2. It's the most affordable uh, Genesis receiver on the market right now. And for the base station, it's the best option. 
Yeah, there was a question also on uh, can we use QGIS and S3 to import and analyze LiDAR data? Of course, if your uh, point cloud is processed, then you can do quite a lot of things with it. Uh, but for example, in a, uh, uh, you need to have some kind of algorithms, for example, for really accurate trees identification and mapping. And this is what we are developing at the moment. Uh, and another one question was, uh, I don't know what you have. Did you use a gimbal or pole? Uh, co uh, concerning what? Uh, I don't understand uh, uh, the question. Uh, uh, gimbal or pole for what? Uh, I think uh, all questions will already answer all questions. If, uh, if any question arises, I will be glad to answer. Yes, so of course, um, everybody can. Uh, so I now I'm displaying the contacts of UGCS of our company and also to Topo John. So just if you have some further uh, questions, just please uh, reach out to to Maxim and uh, also to our support. So we will provide more detailed uh, tech specs on the LiDAR which are used. And uh, there will also, there, there was also a question which is the main difference between the LiDAR 200 and 400, which you presented? Uh, we use, uh, we have two systems, LiDAR 100 and LiDAR 200. The difference in the working range. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, the lightest one, which has a weight less than one kilo, uh, it can walk on 70 meters, uh, 70 meters altitude, 70 meters. And uh, the biggest one can walk on 150 or 170 meters altitude. Uh, I would suggest that for the most part of work, this one is enough. And uh, the weight of the system is very low. And you can use it in, in the backpack or in the drone. So I would say, and it is very affordable and very accurate and very stable results. And I saw some question to Evgeny yeah. uh, about software. Yeah, uh, the software, and then before I jump to software, there was a question about uh, if this, this data could be used for forest management, such as height, lie, vegetation types. Exactly. Uh, both uh, uh, data sets, so photogrammetry data sets and LiDAR data sets could be used for such kind of measurements. But the key difference is, like the key problem of photogrammetry is that you cannot see through the trees. You don't have points under the tree cover. And that's why uh, I would say, let's say with photogrammetry, my experience, usually you could get big trees. So trees with more than, let's say 10 centimeter in diameter, trees more than 10 meters, you would get them accurately. All the small trees, maybe yes, maybe no, depends on the trees, depends on the condition. Uh, with LiDAR, the advantage is that you can really see everything. So uh, LiDAR is uh, giving you a possibility to uh, see some features which are not uh, which you are not able to see under uh, using traditional methods. For example, you can see with LiDAR seedlings which are growing under the tree canopy. And the biggest difference with LiDAR and photogrammetry that in LiDAR, the number of points is so huge so that it could, if you send, let's say billions of points, some of the points will penetrate, not all. Maybe some of the points will, will reach on, but due to the huge number of points, the probability to get data and the valuable information is higher comparing with photogrammetry. Uh, the software, uh, uh, we are developing the software in our research. So we have our own prototypes at the moment. And if you are interested, we can process your data or we could give a hint how to process the data. So feel free to contact. Uh, at the moment, I think it's very interesting and uh, uh, promising direction. And uh, we would be very happy to handle your data or mm -hmm. give you advice how to process the data. You have also my email address in, in the presentation and I would be very happy to help you. Yes, thank you my, very much. So, wow, what a great presentation. So I think uh, the most questions are answered uh, during uh, and also in written. So as I said, also, we will publish the presentation the recording together with the answers to these questions. And yes, for any further communication with uh, any of our teams. So yes, we have receiving also thanks from the participants. Thank you for, for the, the patience uh, for this uh, long webinar. So 
Okay, thank I think, uh, yeah. Uh, Sabine, thank you for opportunity to share our experience and we will, uh, we are usually, fo we are focused uh, to talk with the uh, surveyors uh, to share experience and to provide them enough knowledge to increase their uh, efficiency and accuracy. Uh, thank you. Thank, for you. thank you for, for a lot of questions, I think. Yeah, thank you for excellent software. We really love it. And thank you for the uh, uh, opportunity to present how we could use it in practice. Yes, great. That's that's really awesome. So we collect also from the questions and from your feedback, uh, what should be improved and, and yes. So yeah, Maxim, Avgay, thank you. Thank you all for participating and let's meet in an other event. Bye -bye. So have a great thank day, you. evening, night. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.